Do. Yeah. Uh, uh, here we go now. Uh. I guess man, real mad, like a deep possessed man. If a hooligan run for my I'm chopping them up like Jackie Chan. Cause I finish my weed to Bix, eat my fish and chips. And just like MC Hammer, better be putting them in the mix. Like simple arithmetic, ticks, I plus times, I minus. I chop ragamuffin like a king, call me your highness. So whether the weather be hot, whether the weather be cold, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, uh, you don't know my age, you. <laughs> Wait, no tea. That bar, right? I used to do that bar back in 1994. Detruce, shout out to my boy Detruce. Do you hear that? You were born in 94, man. I used to do that before you were born. <laughs> That's an old bar, man. We OGs, man. We've been doing it, man. And uh, from that from that rhyme, you know that one of my favorite rappers had to be Big Daddy Kane. Whether the whether be hot, whether the whether be and then you no, know, a little bit of Big Daddy Kane, Full Sheikin. My influence is like not just one rapper back then. It was like every single rapper, Red Man. Uh, I had one bar. Like, I make it go sick in the knees like the SWV. So step back, so come on. Oh, for you, your whack MCs. That was my Red Man thing. Before you start, you know, gradually finding your own little niche, you'll probably have your different you know i sound like this i sound like that i sound like but very few people will know that sean price was one of my favorite rappers but i never sounded anything like him because around the time when i was really into sean price i already had my own style look down and no matter how much i listen to a rapper i, I won't really sound like the person it get it, it takes a while before you start getting into that realm but when you do you just learn to just enjoy hip-hop so yeah, what are we talking about? We're just freestyling right now. The year is 2008, 2009, right? And I'm still doing the GLOW tour. So the guys that work for GLOW, right? They don't really, they just know that I'm known in Lagos. So we got to Benin and uh, Sonny Niji was performing. And then one of the glow workers was just looking, where's Monet? Where's Monet? Uh, these guys, they're just the guy talked to me anyhow, shall I? But I was just I just chilled, man. I was with Kraft. So he said, Monet, you are up next. Come, come, come. Oh yeah, come, come. The guy was just talking. I said, guy, calm down, man. Relax, man. Relax, man. Relax, man. So we got, we had to go through the crowd and everything. So we were backstage waiting. The guy, the way the guy was just, you know, barking, I was like, come, I don't work for you, man. Relax. I don't know this guy, right? But uh, I didn't like the way he was talking to us. So it's Benin, right? And then during my question mark days, I'd always been going to Benin. I even did a show, uh, Star Trek in Benin. And it was crazy. Me and Kraft, we did, uh, we rapped to that Jay-Z's. That's what we used to jump on stage. So when it was my time to perform, we jumped on stage. It's a... It's, uh, formality it's a formality we jump on stage comfortable comfortable in benin shout out to all my benin warriors man comfortable we perform the crowd go whoa whoa now the same guy that you know took us to the stage was supposed to that lead us back to the tent so when we jumped down he was like he just looked at me i was like ah mode nine so they know you in benin I was looking at him like, uh, duh. <laughs> I just looked at him. I said, yeah, yeah. You know, been doing a couple of shows here, yeah. They didn't know. They just thought that I was just one guy that was semi-known in Lagos. So, yeah, we went back to the uh, this thing. I saw the way the guy was just looking at me like, wow, man. He didn't expect that. So, every show we were going to was, uh, mm -mm, it was a dub. We were killing shows, me and Kraft. And I, I remember getting robbed first time i'll ever get robbed i know most rappers say, oh, oh we can't get robbed. listen anybody can get robbed i got caught lacking but it wasn't really my fault because i was trying to get to abuja so i can go go to kaduna from there because we had a show in kaduna and i just took ground air mistake i, I couldn't get uh, this thing i couldn't get any, any of the flights because i was ready late i just say let me just take this ground air i missed my flight so I took the ground air and ground air, everybody was like, ground air is the best, ground air is the best. 
there was this weird old man in front and then all of a sudden police stopped police don't stop ground air now police stopped us I saw the guy's uniform rumpled, man. Before I could this thing fire, I told the driver, drive on. I think I was telling the driver, do, drive on. Police don't stop ground there. Oh, my God. So they stop us. So the guy took the driver. And the next thing, they went, came back. One other guy came to sit down. When police uniform rumpled. And then the guy just said, we are robbers. I was like, oh, my God. They drove us inside the bush. Elisha. Not too far from Elisha. That's where I'm from. I'm like, damn, irony. I got robbed in my own town. <laughs> They just drove us into the bush. We saw another car parked there, another car that they had scammed down. You know, they were going through that woman's things nice and easy. The guy used, he said, put heads down. I didn't put my head down. He used the gun, but, but boom, hit me in the head. And then one of the other robbers just looked, wait, 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 wait. I know this guy now. Monan, now Monan, now artist, now artist. Leave him, leave him. Oh boy, leave that story on, I want. One of the other robbers, like that guy, looked zooked out of his mind. Said, "Oh boy, I don't care whether not Jay Z, whether not Jay Z, Jay Z, me I no care whether not barista, whether not this thing or Sadebe, me I no care. I go rob anybody in a job. Me I can't do. I be ghost. If police come, I don't turn to spirits." All right, no problem. They took my laptop. They took my hard drive. They took free phones for me. I, I had to take that loss. I took that L. And there was a guy, a video director, who just finished shooting a video and he was going to Abuja to go and edit or something like that. They took the rushes. They took the bag that had the rushes. They took the whole video. Took the rushes. The guy was livid. And there was a woman. The reason why I didn't say too much, there was a woman. She had two million naira on her. Just like a market woman. Just die, Miss Arapa. They took her two million naira. They took my kicks that I was wearing, my All-Stars. They took the Pumas that I had inside my bag. They took the other All-Stars I, I was taking to Abuja to give 80. They didn't take my jacket though. My red jacket that I used to take some nice pictures. They didn't take that one. They just looked at it. I was too big. They just threw it on the floor. They took my wallet. How much you get? It was 6K in my wallet. I don't travel with a lot of money. And my cards. They took my cards. They said, what's the, this thing? What's the, the pin? I, I turned the pin backwards, give them backwards. They say, if you turn the pin backwards, police go come. Turn the pin, they say, if we go, we go send person. If the person go check, we, 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 we go shoot you. I said, go and send. Because I knew they were not going to risk that. They weren't going to risk it because where the ATM was, it was too far. There was, ain't no way they were going to send. They had to be in and out. So I just insisted, nah. So what the guy did was that he threw my wallet into the bush, threw the car keys into the bush for the ground there threw everything into the bush and they robbed they even brought a brand new honda i think 5.5 million brand new no number plate robbed the guy took the car and they that's the car they escaped and they told us to sit down into the inside the uh, ground air put our heads down it was hot this was 12 noon hot we we're all sweating and they were saying they were gonna burn us they had petrol they were gonna burn us inside the, the ground air bus. They were going to burn us inside it. You know? I think police passed. Woo -woo. They just passed. And then when they came back, they said, now who called police? Who called police? Funny enough, the guy, the video director guy, hid his phone. I hid my iPod. Imagine, now my iPod, I, I hid my iPod. I needed music. The guy hid his phone. Like, look, if the, these guys had seen that phone, we would all be dead. The guy insisted, who get phone there? Who call police? Who get? They said, nobody, oh, nobody, nobody call police. Police just they pass, nobody. Eh. Man, there was a pastor they got, a pastor and his family, they drove them here. Say, where do you be? Who you be? The guy said, I'm a pastor, I'm a pastor. The women in the car said, he's a pastor, he's a pastor. Now in the tear the pastor hot slap, go side, tear slap, pow. A hot slap, slap again, pow. They said, you be fake pastor. If to say you be real pastor as you pray this morning, you know go meet us for here. That means you're a fake pastor. If you're a real pastor, your prayer will not, will, God will, God will stop you from meeting us here. He will prevent this robbery happen if you happening if you were a real pastor. And they slapped the pastor up a couple of times, took all their money and everything. They didn't take their car; they just ransacked the loads and everything. The shit they had, boom. And they took everything that was worth anything. So we're in the bush. This is like two o'clock after the whole thing. 
they left, they, they told us to put our heads down. Then all of a sudden, we heard them arguing about over money and stuff like that. Then next thing, we just heard cars pull off. And we waited for like two minutes and then we put our heads up. They've gone, wow, sweat everywhere. And then they started looking for the car keys, right? And then someone found my wallet. So I had my wallet, boom. I had my wallet with me, I had no phone. I could only remember one person's number, and that was LD, LD's number, 08, 0802, something, something, three, four, seven. I'm not gonna say everything. So yeah, I remembered LD's number. I don't know why, I called that number so many times, that's why I remembered it. So I had that, and then I had no shoes. Somebody gave me slippers, bathroom slippers. And uh, they found the car keys, and boom, we're on our way. But somebody's silly idea. Let's go to the police station to report. Right, report. We wrote a report, all the things we lost and everything. The police ain't gonna do nothing. We're just gonna lose time here. We spent two hours at the police station and we started leaving. We left around four. And we got to Abuja around one. When we got there, I called my friend Chooks, the web designer of Payback Time Records. Chooks now came. I called LD, right? And LD now called Chooks and gave Chooks the number that I used to call him. That's that boy that hid his phone. And then Chooks called that number and then we talked and I said, we're gonna be at the park in blah, 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 Jabi Park, da, da, da. So Chooks drove over, this was 1 a.m. in the night, 1 a.m., early hours of the morning. Came, picked me up, he saw me, like dust all over me because they had us lie down on the floor, like, like I had my walk, I had a walk when the, the earphones, right? The earphones, they stepped on the earphones, so only one ear was working. So I had one ear and my Discman, sorry, my, no, my iPod, not my Walkman, iPod. It was just one ear working on my iPod. And then Chooks just looked at me, was like, wow, Modnat, what happened? And I was like, man, crazy, crazy. So I got to Abuja, to Chooks' place in the area, I think it's area two, so. I got to his place, slept, took my bath. You know, I still had all my clothes, you know. My clothes were intact and everything. They didn't really take, they just took my shoes. So I think me and OD, was it me and OD? Yeah, I think we went to Area 1 Market in Abuja. And I went to go and buy some new shoes, man. I, went, I bought some white kicks, all white. I was like, man, I'm so mad that I'm gonna buy all white, all white. So I bought all white kicks. I bought, I think I bought two pairs. You know, luckily there was, you know, the money, my cards were still intact. My cards, my Zenith Bank card was still intact. So I just withdrew money and I used it to buy the kicks and everything. And I was like, wow, then my, I felt my forehead, there was a little bit of a bump, put ice on it, you know, the bump went down. Started getting contacts off all these phones. I bought myself a new phone. I bought myself a cheap phone then, just so that I can just have something to call. I bought myself a phone, got myself another SIM card, started getting contacts, started calling people, okay, I'm good, I'm good. So we got to KD, me and Odi, we uh, went to the park, the next day we went to KD. Got there, got to the hotel, we're chilling. Then this is what happens, right? There's a hotel that Glow arranges for everybody, but you gotta pay your own hotel bills. So I checked in, we chilled, it's time for the show. We went, I think Sunny Danja was performing at the time we were there. It was in Banawa, I still remember that. Glow Tour, Banawa. I think that was 2009. Either late 2008 or 2000, yeah, it was 2009. I was like 11 years ago, crazy. So, when we jumped on stage, I just told Odie, Odie, speak house out to them. It was, look, that was the best show Basket Mouth announced. Modna went through everything before he came to this play, blah, blah, blah. He even got robbed, but Modna is here today. We're happy that he's still, he's still okay. He's not in blah, blah, blah. You know how it is, and they just, <laughs> but Basket was phenomenal at that tour, man. He was 100%, 100%. Even provided me um, the idea for the song. We're taking comedy money. He gave me that idea. Basket Mouth was 100%. Also, a lot of people don't even know that Basket Mouth is a serious rap head. You know what? I think in 2012, I went to visit Basket Mouth at his, you know, crib. And he was listening to some hip hop songs on iTunes. He said when he traveled, he met these guys and he copped their album and stuff. 
So he listened to like uh, about four songs or something. And you know me, I'm the hip hop king. I know hip hop. Now I'm not to blow my own horn, but I know my hip hop. But I didn't, the, the, the songs were so dope. But I didn't even know who the artist was. I was like, who's that? And he just mentioned some names that went over my head. And I was like, okay, I officially give Basket Mouth his flowers when it comes to hip hop. <laughs> so, yeah, man, a lot of things have happened to me over the years. A lot. I've got so many stories. The stories will be like intertwining into each other. You know, I might be going back, might be going forward, might, you know, to say something that just happened. But hey, man, it's all love and it's all about the life of Mo Nye, popcorn. I'm going to see you next week. Peace.